Lochang chinju lo chang lo chang tang yu le otle no yang lo o chinju lo o lo o tang yu le otle hao jo what does this bangu mean in english lo chang chinju lo chang when people are busy moving around you're not busy moving around lo chang tang yu le otle no yang when all that busyness and noise has come to a stop then like a dog you turn around to see what's going on you ever seen a dog a dog will walk around the park and then they hear something, right? Whoop. Tleno ya means you're turning your head to look to see what's going on. So this Hmong proverb here, like a dog, not saying you're a dog, but the behavior, you turn to look. When people are busy moving around and you're not moving around, that means something's off. Something's telling you, you got to get moving. Because if people are going to school to get degrees, to become professionals, people are cutting ribbons to open new businesses, people are busy doing things, yet you're not doing anything, that's your signal that something is off. Because when people cut those ribbons and they're making noise celebrating, or people are cheering at a graduation ceremony, then like the dog, again, you're not the dog, but the behavior, you turn to look. What is all this noise? And now you start wondering, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I do something with my life? How come five years went by and I'm still in my same spot when everybody else has moved forward and done something with their life? Let me first start off by normalizing that experience that you're going through. This feeling of wanting something better, wanting to release yourself, to get away from this misery, yet you find yourself still trapped in it. I wanna normalize it because we live in a world of morals and principles, right? And with morals and principles and good conscience, we want to do what feels right, especially for ourselves and our family and those around us. And sometimes that might even include you making a huge sacrifice for the sake of communal harmony. I totally get it. It makes sense. The fear behind making those changes and those sacrifices because of the unknown. It's scary. Of course it is. We're all afraid of making changes, especially when we don't know what's behind that decision the potential consequences that we now have to deal with. But if you have a choice between living a miserable life or improving the quality of your life, what would you choose? And because of morals and principles, this doesn't mean that you go around and just start doing whatever you want. It means taking responsibility for the outcome of your life. It means making small incremental changes to improve the quality of your life. Here's an example that I learned from a good friend of mine that I really like, and I hope that it helps you understand and illustrate what I'm talking about here. Imagine yourself sitting in a log in a river. The river represents your life. The log obviously represents the trajectory of your life. And you sitting in the log obviously is you. As the river continues to flow as it normally does, as is our life, life continues to move on. The log and you move down this river as well. As much as you want to stop, life continues to move on. This log moves down the river and sometimes it bumps into a rock or other debris in the river. It shakes your log, makes you feel unstable. And in those events, you blame the rock and you also blame the debris in the river for shaking up your life. And as you continue to flow down this river, you don't seem to have a whole lot of control. You continue to bump into things and you continue to blame the rock and the debris in the river. As you continue down this river, you see people playing on land, celebrating birthday parties, having a picnic, laughing and enjoying the company of one another. You notice that there's something inside of you that wants that too, but you're stuck on this log. This log that moves aimlessly down the river and is controlled by the current of the river. And I hope that as this is happening, you will start considering your options. Do I stay on this log and continue to let the current of the river pull me in different directions? Do I continue to blame the rocks and debris in the river for shaking up my life? Or do you take on the responsibility and say, I need to get on land? My hope is that if you're on this log, it's misery, it's boring, you see what you want, that you would take it upon yourself to get off that log and get on land. Especially because you know what's at the end of that river. I'm confident that what you want, you already know. The next step is, how do you make that first move? And then of course, make that move. I hope that helps. Take care, be well. Peace out.